Welcome to this soul lifting broadcast, which has been put together for your spiritual growth and to make greatness common right where you are. Be sure to make the best of this moment as God takes the lead in all that concerns you. We we'll continue the series of teachings we started. Uh, I think it's, we're in our fourth week right now. The honor code. The honor code. I, I trust God this morning that the word of God will come with simplicity and accuracy and that you will never be the same again. That the Holy Spirit will use this word uh, to bring transformation, to bring enlightenment uh, into your heart. Uh, that it will engender grace to you as you listen in the precious name of Jesus. Say a better amen somebody. The honor code, the honor code, and I'm speaking today on what I've titled Unlocking Channels of Blessings. Unlocking Channels of Blessings. If you haven't been in church for a while, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we, we, we've discussed many things that you need to catch up with. We started by saying that God owns everything. It gives us the opportunity to steal what is resources. He owns everything, but it gives us the opportunity to steal what is resources. First Corinthians 4 from verse 1, just like we sang this morning. That God's gift look, looks good on us. But Paul, the apostle, made bold to say there in 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 1, he said, let man so consider us, let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. What Paul was saying is that we consider ourselves, we know that stewardship looks good on us. <laughs> so when you see us, see us as servants of Christ and stewards of his mystery. When, how do you see yourself? That's one great pillar in this teaching that you and I need to see ourselves as stewards of God's gift. Yeah. As servants of God and stewards of God's gift and God's mysteries. And that includes the, the, the provision that God will bring into our, our, our lives. So we have emphasized the fact that everything belongs to God. All that we have, all that we are, and all that we will ever be, everything belongs to God. We are stewards. We will be held accountable, and we want to be found faithful. So I want to say this after me. Say, I'm a steward. I will be held accountable. I want to be found faithful. Can we say it one more time? Say, I'm a steward. I will be held accountable. I want to be found faithful. From the Bible of talent will realize that the ones who manage resources well is the one that is adjured to be faithful. Yeah. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in little and more shall be added to you. Many Christians pray for abundance. We pray for more, but we don't pay attention to what does God want from me in the, the level where I am and in the things that he has given me. Whether it is uh, uh, our time, our talent, or our treasure. Because when we discuss the topic of, uh, you know, biblical stewardship, a lot of the time we're limited to the treasure, to money. But it starts with your time. And we committed one Sunday to that. We talked about our talent. We committed another Sunday to that. So if you have not been around, you need uh, to follow through and get all these things. We've said that time is a convertible currency. And somebody listening to me today, if this is all you will do this week, that you will devote more time to something that is very important to you, like building your marriage. Because when you see a marriage that's been neglected, you will know because of the way it looks. But you, if you see one where time has been invested into it, you will know. Somebody listen to me this morning, you're in church to pray about that business and to ask for divine intervention. But will you invest a little bit of more time this week to think through that business. Holding yourself accountable as a good steward of the 24 hours a day that God will give you. Because if you invest more time in that business, definitely uh, God will show up and you will see the end of God. Most of the time is that we have not covered our own side of the bargain and we keep bombarding heaven. And heaven is saying, pay attention to the head first. <laughs> pay attention to the things that you are supposed to do. Glory be to Jesus. Praise God. And last Sunday, we emphasized the need for us to pay attention to Matthew 6 and verse 24. Yeah. That is either you serve God or mammon. That no, that, that, there's no middle ground. Yeah. You remember that message? Wait, wait, wait. wait. You know, we emphasize the difference between uh, uh, 
the rich guy that met Jesus and Jesus said, go and sell everything and come and follow me. And the guy went away sorrowful. And Zacchaeus, who met Jesus, and he said, you know what? Without you talking to me at all, I just feel maybe some conviction right now in your presence. I'm going to, you know, sell everything that I have. I mean, I'm going to give half of my wealth to the poor. And if I've collected anything from anyone unjustly, I'm going to repay them for full. And Jesus said, today salvation has come into your house. And, yeah, and he said there, he said, you can't serve two masters. Is that you honor one and disdain the other? Is it that you are loyal to one and despise the other? And he says, you cannot serve God and mammon. Many Christians would have preferred that God will put there, you can't serve God and Satan. Because some people think that if people don't serve God, it's Satan they will be serving. But many people are not serving God or they, they, they are Christians, but they are actually serving money. For us as Christians, our problem most of the time is not the devil. The devil is an issue, but it's not the main issue because we, we have power over him. We have victory. If we're truly working on our victory, the devil is not the problem. They are the things that we get him into bondage with. Those are the real issues. Because if money has been causing problems in your family, <laughs> you are the one that opened the door to the devil. If you practice real stewardship, openness and accountability, accountable to God first, and to your partner, then money will not become something that can scatter your family. Somebody stay with me today. Say better amen if you're still here. Amen. So talking about channels of blessing, I'm discussing the stewardship of our treasure. Now that we have a bit of mindset that aligns us with kingdom principles of stewardship. The stewardship of our treasure. Let's read from 2 Corinthians 9. I'll read from verse 8 to 10 in the Amplified Translation. 2 Corinthians 9 from verse 8 to 10 in the Amplified Translation. It says, And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come in abundance to you so that you may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need, whatever type of need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being complete, self-sufficient in him. And have an abundance of every good work, an act of charity. Uh, uh, and it is as it is written, and forever remains written. He, the, the benevolent and generous person, scattered abroad, gave to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now he who provides seed for the sower and bread for food. We provide and multiply your seed for sowing. That is, your resources. And increase the harvest of your righteousness, which shows itself in active goodness, kindness, and love. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Now, what we're speaking to this morning is my mindset when it comes to the treasure at my disposal, what God has given me. What, what is the biblical stewardship framework or mindset that every believer should have when it comes to money? You know, money is an important topic. Yeah. Money, you know, always makes the news every day. Every day. Yeah. If I say anything now that seems like, you know, table shaking, it will make news tomorrow because it's money. Yeah. But if it's about what? <laughs> if it's about something else, not deciding how table shaking it, 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 it may be, nobody will talk about it tomorrow. Because some people are going to uh, hear things in church, you know, about money or about other things, and it's all resolved on your mind until you get to work on Monday. And you're going to discuss it with somebody because it's still bothering your mind. And that's what happens a lot of the time. And rather than going back into the scriptures, a lot of people go and discuss it with people who don't know the context. Who don't understand what we're talking about? And then they confuse you the more. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Say it better. Amen, somebody. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 to 10 there. The scripture talks about something, especially in the final verse. Uh, where, where it says, Now, he who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will provide and multiply your seed for sowing. He who provides seed to the sower and bread for food, yeah, 
bread for food said it will multiply. Okay, you're showing Amplified Classic and I'm reading Amplified. I think you don't have that. You should have signaled me. Praise God. <laughs> it creates some, uh, okay, but it's okay. I, I, I can, I can do it. I can make do with this. And God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources. Uh, what the apostle Paul was quoting here is found in Isaiah 55. Give me Isaiah 55, New King James Version, from about verse 7. Isaiah 55 from about verse 7, quickly. Isaiah 55 from about verse 7. Right? So, Isaiah 55 from verse 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his ways and your righteous man is taught. Let him return to the Lord and he will, uh, he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abund ab abundantly pardon. Verse 8 says, uh, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Look at verse 9. That's where I'm going. He said, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And he said, let me compare it this way. Verse 10, he says, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bold, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. That was what Apostle Paul was quoting there in, uh, in 2 Corinthians 9 and, and, and verse 9 and 10. Uh, when rain comes down from heaven, because God was saying, the way you leverage my word and get something out of it is the same way the earth leverages the rain that comes from heaven and comes upon the earth. And he said, there are two objectives for it. The end game for my benevolence of releasing rain on the earth is that there will be one seed to the sower and then bread to the eater. That means, God says, when I cause rain to come upon the earth, two things will happen. Two ways you appropriate my benevolent grace or my act of divine provision. When I provide for you, the two things that will come out of it, it can either be that you, I mean, that you get resources and it can either be seed for sowing or bread for eating. A lot of the time, many people have the mindset that everything that God has provided for me is bread for eating. And that's a wrong mindset. Some of that time, some people have the mindset that everything that God has provided for me is seed for sowing. When you see such people, you think that God has not blessed them at all. <laughs> yeah. Because everything just flows out. Uh, nothing is retained. Some people are so futuristic. They are currently useless to themselves and to their families. Everything that God gives them is for the future. And, you know, whoever has a seed today is the one that has a future, actually. So what I'm saying is that such people, they think that everything is seed. No bread at all. No bread. Everything is seed. Let me give you a second mindset and I'm come, I'll come back to this seed and bread. Another mindset that every believer should also have is what we found in Luke chapter 20, when you read from verse 20. They came to Jesus Please, all the first one, bread and seed, I'm coming back to it. But the second mindset is they came to Jesus in Luke, Luke chapter 20 from verse 20. Let's read it together. Uh, 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 I'm just going to read it from Luke chapter 20 from verse 20 down to 25. So they walked him and set spies who pretended to be righteous that they might seize on his wall in order to deliver him to the power and the authority of the governor. Verse 21 says, then they ask him, saying, teacher, we know that you, uh, that you say and teach rightly, and you do not show personal favoritism, but teacher, or, uh, but teach the way of God in truth. Verse 22 says, they ask him the question, is it lawful for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Verse 23, but he perceived their craftiness and said to them, why do you test me? Verse 24 says, show me the denarius, the coin, whose image is inscribed, uh, an inscription does it have? 
They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. So I submit to you, Elevation Church, this morning, that there are two frameworks that a believer should have when it comes to handling resources. One is to ask the question, is this seed or bread? Another one from Luke 20 is to ask the question, is this Caesar's or God's? <laughs> because he also said, render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. A lot of the time, if I want to be a steward of God's gift, if I want to be a steward, and a disciple, every disciple of Christ should be a steward. We must have uh, that accountability mindset of a steward. And what that does to us is that it helps us to ask the right question. So that when we are being held accountable, we will not say we did not know the accounting standard. <laughs> you know, that's what some organizations will say today when you say, ah, your books are everywhere. Is that, ah, which, code are, which accounting code are you using? Or which standard are you using? There's uh, the accounting standard for the kingdom of God. All accountants in the house say, hi. Uh -huh. They know what I'm talking about. The accountant, they, 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 there's a standard, there's a, there's a code, yeah, with which you write your reporting, financial reporting, we call it. There's a financial reporting standard for every region of the world. And now the world is even trying to harmonize it. In the kingdom of God also, we have like a reporting standard. And those reporting standards are based on what I'm sharing this morning. And th those are the things that open us up for real channels of blessing, real blessings. Is this bread or seed? Does this belong to God or is, does it belong to Caesar? Because Jesus said, give unto God what belongs to God and to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. So learn to differentiate which part of your earning is bread to eat and which part is seed to sow. They're not the same. We always need to learn to, to recognize this. Is this bread or is this seed? Yeah. Is this bread or is this seed? Bread to eat, seed to sow. There are things also that belongs to God and what belongs to Caesar. Caesar can mean anything to you. There are Christians who don't pay taxes. <laughs> there, are, there, there are Christians who don't, who don't want to pay certain fees, certain things. And they want to use the favor of God <laughs> to exempt themselves from it. <laughs> You know, there are things that favor will exempt you from. But there are some things Jesus said, belongs to Caesar, give it to Caesar. And what about things that belong to God? Those also fall under seeds that we need to sow. There has been all kinds of talk about tithing in the last two or three years, especially here in Nigeria. And nothing can be further from the truth. There are things that belong to God. There are certain parts of your earning that is not practically your own, that needs to go back to God. Is the giver of all good things. And God expects us to honor him. See the diff. I'm going to share more about that maybe next week. The difference between the Old Testament and New Testament is that one is done under grace. We honor God just like you honor human beings, not under compulsion. But does it have a reward? Does God recognize it? Yes. In the Old Testament, if you don't bring it, you die. They do something bad to you. In the New Testament, nobody's going to kill you for not bringing it, but whatever benefit that you accrue for doing it, it will still not come to you. Because you are supposed to do it under grace, no compulsion. You are supposed to do it with common sense, not the law. Somebody following me this morning. You are supposed to do it because you want to honor God, not because God is threatening you. I will say together. Yeah, there are two different things. I, it's my choice to honor you. Yeah. It's just like the song that we sing. Jesus, Jesus, it is with my pleasure that I praise you. It's my pleasure. It is my honor. You know, I chose to. I, I've chosen to. You understand what I'm saying? Not because there's a set of law, like the law of Moses. They didn't have a choice. Grace respects my choice because it's not compulsion but it does not tolerate lasciviousness or useless behavior at the same time it does not tolerate lack of honor at the same time I, I'm still expected 
to honor God notwithstanding. Are you still with me today? Let me go on. Let me, let me go on with this. So, when we talk about bread, let's break it down a little bit more. I, I'm probably going to stop with just bread today and next week we're going to discuss seed. So, somebody says, uh, say after me, say, my resources will either be bread or seed. Say, I want to be faithful to be able to identify my bread and then identify my seed. Glory be to Jesus. Can you put this slide on for me, the one that shows uh, seed, bread, God, and Caesar? Can you put it up? Yeah. So this is one thing that I don't want people to forget. I don't want you to forget this. This imagery. Yeah. To be able to say, you know, there is seed, there's bread, there's God, there's Caesar. Everything under seed, we can say, those are the things that God expects us to return. Next week, we're going to break it down a little bit more. Whether you are giving to the poor, you are doing this and all that. Yeah. But when it comes to bread, there are also things like uh, Caesar kind of things. But apart from that, uh, uh, you know, because when, when in, a, in an ideal nation, when you pay taxes, you are paid for your road. That is your bread. You are going to ride on that road. You are paid for hospital. You, you understand what I'm saying? You are paid for education. It's just that in the third world, we know that the taxes disappear. Am I saying the truth? Yeah. Well, the, the, the taxes don't do what they're supposed to do. So what is bread? Let's, let's look through that uh, quickly. It's provision, for instance, for, for, you know, for my domestic, uh, welfare and well-being. That's, that's bread. You know, there are people who, they earn a lot, but in their house, nobody feels it. Yeah. Because there's no bread in the house. No bread in the house. Everybody is, you know, scraping and scratching. And sometimes it, it, it's either the mindset that everything should be seed. You know, there are Christians who give their children school fees for sacrificial giving in church, and the children will not go to school. Now, I'm going to come to it because there's a balance to what I'm teaching this morning. Yeah, there's a balance to what I'm teaching this morning. But before I get to that balance, I need to say some things and they may sound hard. They may sound hard. Uh, uh, we need to understand that in 1 Timothy 6 and 17, the Bible says, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who does what? He gives us richly all things to do what? Can I hear you one more time? There's a part of what God has given us that he wants us to richly enjoy. Can I help somebody here this morning? When you get your income and you enjoy a part of it, don't feel any guilt at all. Yeah. For that time, join the Chop Life Gang. And just enjoy yourself. Yeah. Because the Bible says that it gives us freely all things to enjoy. Yeah. That is our bread. It's just that a disciple of Christ must have that mindset that when I'm enjoying my bread, God wants me to enjoy it. That's why Jesus said we should pray, you know, after this manner. Give us this day our daily bread. That's what I need for today. It's just that it, it, when I manage my bread very well, it doesn't stop at what I need for today. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. It, it, it takes me beyond today because I'm able to keep some things behind as bread. Yeah, so your family, your children must not be left hungry or financially exposed because you are either giving to others or that you are sowing for the future and things like that. No. There's, there's what needs to be enjoyed for today. There's the bread. And a good steward also takes care of the bread. So there's bread in your house all the time. You're not called to be hungry, wretched, and broke. No. That's not the, the call of God upon our life. So we honor God by enjoying the things that he has provided for us and our families. Part of how we honor God is that people see 
the blessing of God in our life. You remember the story, let me digress a bit, of uh, the prodigal son. The prodigal son, the only problem with the prodigal son was his lack of financial uh, intelligence. What he did by asking for what belongs to him was not wrong. Because the one who never asked, when he came to the father, the father said, I've been waiting for you. You should have asked. Yeah, you should have asked. But you, you saw your brother asking and you thought, you know, he's a stupid boy, he just want to enjoy, you know. And true to it, it was stupid. Not because he asked, but because he was not prepared for the blessing. Is somebody say with me today? Yeah, he was not prepared for what he was asking for. Many a times, people pray. You go from prayer house to prayer house asking for the blessing of God. But the issue is, do you have capacity for the opportunities that God will bring into your life? Because a lot of the time, when you don't have the capacity, what happens is that they, they think can sweep you away. Because one of the things that will happen is you take everything and you think it's bread. And then you don't remember God again. You think everything is, that was what happened to the prodigal son. Carried everything, went, you know, uh, on his way and just spent everything anyhow. Riotous living, the scripture calls it. A believer that doesn't, that, 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 that doesn't have a sense of separating his bread from his seed is living riotously. Yeah. Is the senior or junior brother of the prodigal son. <laughs> or is in the same lineage of the prodigal son, if I can put it that way. Anybody that does not have, any believer that doesn't have any savings is a prodigal son or daughter of God. Yeah. Any believer that doesn't, nobody benefits from what you have. Even God doesn't benefit from what you have and you're spending everything on yourself. Yeah, prodigal son or prodigal daughter. And you know what happens. God is always merciful. Prodigal son or daughter can always come back home. So I'm calling such people back home today. Yeah. Yeah, our arms are wide open. Praise God. Yeah. So you, as you start to separate your seed from your bread, come back home and honor God with your life. Listen to all the messages in this series and choose to go on the path of the honor code and start to honor God with your life. So I hope somebody's getting something out of this. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, was, I was talking about the bread and the mindset that we need to have. It's not, you know, a, a, a mindset of just making everything bread, but some things that are bread must remain bread. So basic increase in your capacity when you invest in your capacity to earn more, that's still like your bread. It's what you retain. Yeah, that, that helps you to do that. Uh, uh, bread is only sown once in a while, based on divine instruction. It can be threatening when God asks for your bread. I remember, uh, which year was that? Is it 2008 or 2009? I was praying, knowing that a season is coming where God wanted my wife and I, you know, to plant this church. And, you know, I used to pass up at this Christian center. As at 20, 2007, I was already having some conversations with my pastor uh, where we're talking about this church plant and all that. And, you know, we're just praying and say when the appropriate time comes. And, but in 2008, I think, I started to pray a particular prayer that God, what is the way to prepare for this next phase? Especially based on my sense of stewardship and, and, and in my finances, because I know moving from uh, stable income to starting something new, you just have to absolutely be able to rely on God. Absolutely. So, December of that year, 2008, I think, God told me, as you cross into this new year, I need your first three months salary. And everything that comes to you, first three months, I want it. Let's circumcise you first. <laughs> that was how it felt. He didn't say that one, but I heard it. That if somebody is asking for your first quarter salary, they just want to circumcise you. Yeah. So I remember I told my wife, yeah, she's here to bear witness. I said, God is asking for my first quarter salary for this year. And I know it's part of my preparation for the next level. For, you know, now being a lead pastor or starting a new work to be able to trust God. And I said, whatever you have or that's left from your salary, 
we're going to uh, manage that one. And by the way, that time we're paying mortgage at the same time. Yes, we have started paying mortgage that time. So we will have deducted all the mortgage and all that from our own salary. So whatever is still remaining, that's what we're going to spend. Um, but do you know what happened to me? It was like my first experience, not my first, but my first major experience where it will be prolonged. Yeah, because I remember when we were about to get married, I knew all the money I had in my account, I think it was 60,000 Naira. Yeah, it was a lot of money then, because that's almost 18 years, I mean, I'm talking about this particular story is now 19 years old. Yeah, 19 years ago, all that I had in my account was 60,000 Naira. We were about to get married. The money was not going to, because I deducted the money to buy gown and wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> and wedding ring and some things from it. And what was remaining was looking like change. Also based on the preference of my wife. <laughs> because we had gone to some of the places where we were going to buy the gown and I had an idea of the, of the price. You understand? So, and, and many other things that were committed to. And I sat in a service like this. I think it was a third or fourth service at Daystar, 71 Oregon Road. My pastor was preaching. And as he was preaching, I wasn't listening to what he was saying. I was thinking about the wedding bills and all that. This is the confession of your pastor. You know, sometimes when you have some bills, you struggle to hear the word of God. Yeah. <laughs> some people, some people will be sleeping and they will be dreaming about dollars. <laughs> when you have dollar denominated bills to pay, you understand what I'm saying? You don't be seeing that dollar sign in the ceiling as well. So that was the kind of thing that was happening to me. My pastor was preaching. I was struggling to concentrate. And it was the wedding bills that was on my mind. And all of a sudden, I felt God told me, what about if you just write one check and clear that money and just give it to your pastor after service? If you have a checkbook here. And then watch me and see what I would do. <laughs> uh, you know how it goes now. You've all got the devil. What we said is not enough. Something is telling you to clear it with one check. <laughs> but you know the truth? That voice will not leave me. And you know when you have worked with God enough, you know how he speaks to you. It's your choice to listen or not to listen. So it's not about whether God is speaking to you or not. So I picked my checkbook. I wrote that one check. One check and clear everything. My pastor finished preaching. He came and sat down. I was just like two seats away from him. I just made sure everything was okay, you know. As the service was ending, I just leaned towards his side and put the envelope in his hand. I said, this is just a seed. I didn't tell him it was everything I had, though. Maybe he would not have even taken it. Yeah. I just told him, it's just a seed, the sacrificial seed that God said I should give you. And he just put his hand on me and he prayed for me. Can I tell you the truth? Many things happen that I cannot exhaust today. Yeah. Somebody called me to a store. It was an expensive store in Okwebi. Uh, um, a, a church member then, a guy who just used to come into a church once in a while, and just said, oh, uh, um, I heard you're getting married. I want to fit you. Shoe, suit, everything. Complete. So you can imagine how much I would have spent on that. Complete. So many things happen. I mean, God just showed up. When God requests for your bread, know that it's not about to kill you. It's about to Open the windows of heaven. Yeah. It won't happen all the time because it's, it's not an irresponsible God. But it will happen a lot of the time, even when your bread can no longer feed you. <laughs> Just like the story that we saw in 2 Kings, I think 2 Kings chapter 4. No, no, no. That's Elisha. But no, it was the Elijah story. The Elijah story in, in, in 1 Kings. Yes. First Kings chapter 17, when you read from verse 8, that's the, that's what buttresses what I'm saying today. The second story I was telling before about the three month salary. Can I tell you what that did to me? I'm going to read this and then I'll, I'll start to tie this up and close. You know what that did to me? And I tell you the truth and I lie not. From that year, eh, that year, something happened that year. Till today. That year, for the first time in my life, I lost a salary mindset, which was what God was trying to do to me. 
Because for instance, when this church started, I mean, the pastors are here to bear witness. The church could not even pay the salary I was anywhere I was coming from. When I was in this time, I had a brand new official car, good salary and all that. And for a new church that's just starting with less than 100 people, you can't do that. So I had to make a covenant with God that I'm never going to put this church under pressure. The first year of this church, I didn't earn anything. I didn't earn any salary. I remember meeting that Pastor TJ and uh, Idris and I believe they were called and they said, look, a PG, at least the church has small offering. Can we pay for your phone recharge and for your this and for that? I think I still turned it down. But after a few months, they have found a way to so say, look, we have to give this man something so that he won't die. <laughs> but you know what they didn't know was that God already prepared me for that. I had more than enough faith to live without an income and be okay. From that year till today, you can never threaten me with salary and allowance again in my life. My life, as in, I never depended on whatever flows from an organization to me again from that day. In fact, my last year or so, last one or two years in Daystar, I didn't know when they paid salary because I, I didn't need it again. That was what happened. I had more than enough money that I didn't have to depend on that salary again. You know, people go around the office and say, have they paid salary? Have you got a lot? No. And, it's, and up to today, that's my testimony. Up to this point I'm talking about. In this chart now, I get some, some allowances and all that, but I don't even know. As in, when, whenever it comes in or it doesn't come in, it's not my problem. Because I, I, God just has a way of sorting me out. And it started from there. When God demands your bread, please listen. I've been saved and working with God over 30 years. It won't happen all the time. But when it happens, it's not about to kill you. It's about to move you to the next level. That was the story of First King uh, 17 from verse 8. Uh, uh, the word of the Lord came to Elijah and said, Go to Zarephath that belongs to Sidon and dwell there and see, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. And you know what happened? What Elijah did here is a modern day pastor should do this. All the blocks will carry it this week. Yeah. To say a pastor went to a widow, a woman without husband, but with children, eh? or with a child, and she had her last card, and the pastor was so callous, he collected it. <laughs> I just need you to have this at the back of your mind. You know that some very callous pastors and people who Con people with money. We're not talking about that. We're talking about when God gives an instruction. Because it looks like the media has only focused on such. And the last three years or so in Nigeria, it's been like, oh, pastors collect people's money. And this, that, that, that. And many people have been robbed of a covenant work with God, with their resources, just based on all the much slinging in the media. Where do you pack Elijah? If you put it in, in that context. God told Elijah, go to Zarephath that belongs to Sidon. I have commanded a widow to provide for you there. Elijah did not ask God, why widow? I'm okay here. See, God was using a bird to feed Elijah before that time. The problem here was not Elijah. It was the widow that God wanted to preserve. God could raise anybody for Elijah. He was already using an animal to feed Elijah. Read the Bible very well. But for that widow to be preserved, Elijah had to go there as a representative of God and take what is in, his, in her hand. And then the hand of God comes upon it and the widow is preserved. The, the woman told Elijah, said, we don't have anything. Just, just small flour and oil. I want to make this cake. We will eat it and then we'll die. When your bread is your last card, God will often ask for it. This woman thought this was the last thing. We eat it and die. But when God, you know, uh, in verse 13 there, uh, uh, the Bible says, and Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as I've said, but make me a small cake from it and bring it to me. And after was make some for yourself and your son. God will always still give you it turns your, see, in the bread that is remaining in, for this woman, 
it still divided bread and seed out of it. Yeah. It was supposed to be only bread, but he said, okay, for your sustainership, take this, give this to the man of God. And Elijah released a word there. He said, for thus says the Lord of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil dry until the day the Lord send rain on the earth. The Bible says in verse 15, so she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. And the bin of flour was not used up, nor the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which is spoke by Elijah. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I have to stop here. But I need everybody to understand today that we are living in a time that we need to rely on God the most. Yeah. But we need to rely on God. If there's somebody here that you have been playing games with God with your financial life, this is the time to rely on Him and choose to honor Him and rearrange your financial priorities. And just tell yourself, I'm going to honor God. I'm going to honor God. Next week, we're, we're going to break it down a little bit more as we speak about your seed. But make sure you have your bread. God wants to preserve you. But when he demands your bread, don't say it's my bread. You can't touch this. No. Because there's something that God is about to do and he needs your cooperation to be able to do it the way he wants to do it. May the channels of blessings open over your life. May the heavens open over you in unusual dimensions this season. May grace be released over you as our world will be turned around and around this season. May God find you faithful. As he rearranges resources and influence this season, uh, may you be positioned to be trusted. May you be positioned to be found faithful. In the name of the Lord Jesus, lift your two hands to Jesus today and just let him know, Lord, make me a steward. Give me the wisdom of stewardship. Give me the wisdom of stewardship. Thank you for listening. We hope you are truly blessed. Please feel free to email us at info at elevationng.org for all inquiries or to share any testimonies. You can also follow us on our social media channels at ElevationNG. To have access to real-time updates on all broadcasts and special programs. Till we come your way again, keep making greatness common.